Okay, let's take a look. First of all, about the x-axis. We're going to take this arc length, y equals r, whip it around the x-axis. Now, what are we going to generate when we take this around the x-axis? Well, a cylinder. What we're doing is finding the lateral surface area of a right circular cylinder this time. Okay? What's the lateral surface area of a right circular cylinder? It's well, top, what's that? It's not the top, right? Well, what it is, is, is this gets whipped around the x axis. So it's not the top and the bottom, it's just the. It, it's the whole thing as you get whipped around the x axis. What it's going to be, if you were to cut it and open it up, it's just like we were talking before. What is it? It's the area of that rectangle, which is equal to a circumference. Okay, 2 pi r, now r in this case is capital R, h, the length of this, which is equal to h. This lateral surface area of this right circular cylinder is 2 pi r h. That's what we should get when we do the integral. So let's do it. About the x-axis, the surface area is equal to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to h, R. Now, what is R? When we go around the x-axis, R is this height above the x-axis. What's that height above the x-axis in this case? Big R is correct. Square root of 1 plus the derivative square. What's the derivative of big R? Zero. That is correct. It's zero. It's a constant. Okay? Derivative is a constant. So, we end up with square root of 1, which is 1. 2 pi, take the big R off front, it's a constant. 1 dx, that's just x, from 0 to h. We get 2 pi r h. That's exactly what we said we had to get. Okay, that's it. That's pretty simple. I thought, well, Go ahead. I That is s sub x. This one is s sub x. Okay? All right, let's go around the y axis this time. <coughs> it's going to be a little bit different. We we'll still are going to generate a cylinder, okay? A right circular cylinder. But now the r's and h's reverse the rules, okay? So let's see what happens. So around the y axis, we're going to get 2 pi, the integral. As we go around the y-axis, x is still going to go from 0 to h. Okay. R, now what's the distance from the y-axis equal to? x. Square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. Okay. The derivative is still 0. Okay. That doesn't change. So we end up with 2 pi. The, uh, this is just a 1, the integral of x, x squared over 2, from 0 to h, the 2's cancel, we end up with pi h squared. Now think about this. When we take this around the y-axis and generate this right circular cylinder, it's going to be this one. Let's see if I can draw this right here. This is what we have. Okay. This distance is equal to r. This distance is equal to h. Okay. Now what we have here is what we have here is two. Okay. The radius of this is equal to h. So it's going to be pi h squared times, and, and that's it. This is the lateral surface area, is this area on the outside here. And what's it equal to? It's equal to, if you cut this open, the, the circumference, which is, again, yeah, it's 2 pi r, it's 2 pi r h, and the r is equal to h, and the h is equal to h, so you get the pi r squared. And that's what you get. Okay? There it is. It's kind of weird. But that's what it is. Okay? You guys ready to go on? Yep. Let's do it. We have one more thing to do. Really? That's it.
Law. Hooke's Law. Work done by a spring. Here we go. Where are we, where are we doing the proof for? Uh, What's that? Proof yeah, we'll do a proof. We'll do the whole thing. Great. All right. Uh, let's talk about work. Yeah. Okay? Work. Uh, work, what's work? Work is uh, force, force times a distance. No, force no. times acceleration. No. Oh, well, F equals MA. That's force is equal to mass times acceleration. But work is equal to force times a distance. This is uh, section um, 7. This is work done by a spring. 7.5? I think it's 7.5. I'm not positive. It's work. Uh, done by a spring. Uh, it's it's our compromise with the physics department. Um, yeah, it's a compromise because physics people want to do all the work problems. Actually, they want to do most of the problems, the work problems, the fluid force problems in this chapter themselves, their way. We like doing it our way. So we compromise. We do the spring. They do the gravitational attraction uh, work. I'd be curious to see what Professor Brewer is going to do if she does the gravitational attraction one, too. Uh, but we'll see. We traditionally do work done by a spring and let the physics department do work done under gravity. All right, but. We touched and we touched Hooke's Law today. You did Hooke's Law? We touched it. In, In physics? physics today. Literally said that the force of a spring is Hooke's Law, and that's all. <laughs> Oh, well, we're going to derive the thing. All right, in general, uh, work done under a constant force, okay, is the force times the distance. The work done in lifting uh, a 40 pound weight, 5 feet, is 40 times the 5, 200 foot pounds of work. That's what the work done in lifting that, uh, that uh, weight. Now, if you were to lift that weight 5 feet off the ground and then start walking with it, the additional work done is zero. Zero work, because you're working, you're moving up perpendicular to the force. Force of gravity is pushing downward. If you move perpendicular to it, you do no work at all, okay? No work at all. It's the work of lifting it five feet off the ground, that's all the work, okay? That's the 500, it's the uh, five feet times the 40 foot pounds, 200 foot pounds of work is done, so okay? So ignoring the fact that you lift your legs up and down. Yes, yeah, that's it. There's no work in that. Well, I suppose there is. I mean, if you want to get picky, yeah, that's true. All right, here's what we're going to do. We've got a spring. Okay. We're going to put a weight on this spring. Now, putting a weight on this spring will stretch the spring okay, a certain distance. Now, the amount of distance that it stretches the spring is dependent upon the characteristics of the spring. How many coils it has? What's it made out of? How thick the coils are? A whole bunch of things go into this. Okay? This spring has certain properties. Okay? And Hooke's law says that the force required is, a, is proportional to the distance that it stretches the spring. The more it stretches the spring, this distance x, the more it stretches it, the more force that's required. Okay? And depending on the properties of the spring, every spring has a certain constant associated with that spring. Okay? Depending on, like I said, the number of coils, the material, and things like that. Okay? Now, so here's, here's one thing. Let's suppose we put a 50 pound weight on this, and it stretches the spring from its natural length here, and it stretches it, uh, let's say, uh, 10 feet beyond its natural length. Okay? Here's what that tells us. According to this spring, a force of 50 pounds stretched at 10 feet, we can solve for K for this spring. This spring has a K of 5. Okay? That spring has a constant, a spring constant of 5, depending on its, like I said, what it's made out of, how many coils it has, how thick the coils are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, here's what we want to do. We, we're given that. You're going to be given that K, the spring constant. Then what's going to happen is you're going to take this spring, take the weight off perhaps, or maybe even put additional weight on. But if we take the spring, the weight off, it returns to its natural length. Then we want to know how much work is done in stretching this thing some distance x. Okay? 
How much work is done stretching this spring a distance x? <coughs> well, uh, it's going to change. As we stretch this out, it's going to take more and more force to stretch it out, which means it's going to be a greater and greater amount of work as we stretch it out. We know what k is. We know k is equal to 5. But as we go from here to here, the force is changing. As the distance x changes, the force required changes. It's getting greater and greater. We have to do more and more work to stretch that spring out a, 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 some distance. Okay? Let's take a little interval of this. So let's take a delta x right here. How much work is done over that little interval of distance? Well, that piece of work is approximately equal to, what's that? It's a piece of work. It's a piece of work, all right. That piece of work is equal to the force times the delta x. It's a force times the distance. Well, the distance is that little delta x distance. The total amount of work done in going from here to here okay, is the sum of all these individual pieces of work. Sum them all up. And we'll take a limit as n goes to infinity as well. Okay. Well, guess what? We've got a Riemann sum. The force depends on x. It's a function of x. Times a delta x. A Riemann sum. The amount of work is equal to The work done. Let's do it. It's pretty simple. Let's take this uh, one spring. We put a 50-pound uh, weight on there, stretches it 10 feet. We know k is equal to 5. We're going to take the weight off. Now, how much work is done in stretching it from its natural length to, let's say, 5 feet beyond its natural length? The work done is equal to the integral from 0 to 5. Remember, we turned the spring back to its original length. Okay. Then we want to stretch it 5 feet beyond its original length. So the work done, it goes from 0 to 5 of f. Now, what's f in this case? It's equal to 5x dx. You will be given the information to solve for k, and once you find k, use that f equals kx to integrate it. I thought f was 50. Uh, the original f was 50, yes. And that stretched it 10 feet, and that allowed us to find k. Now, I took that weight off. The spring went back to its natural length. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to stretch it 5 feet beyond. How much work is done in stretching it 5 feet beyond its natural length? That's what we're finding out right now. Okay, and what's that equal to? The integral of 5x dx, which is 5x squared over 2, 0 to 5. Okay, uh, 25 times 5, 125 over 2. That's how much work is done, foot pounds of work. Okay. That's it. That's the whole problem. These problems are very, very simple. Okay, you guys ready to do it? <laughs> Same problem. Okay, you ready? Same problem. Here we are. We've stretched it five feet beyond its natural length. Okay. 125 halves foot pounds of work was done was required to do that stretching. Now here's the spring. It's five feet beyond its natural length. Here's what I want to know. How much work now is required to stretch it an additional five feet beyond that length? Okay. Go ahead. Yes, I'm going to stretch it now an additional five feet. Yeah, I'm going to go from five feet beyond to ten feet beyond. That's what we're going to do. Wait, 15, right? No. 10, ten feet beyond. Oh, okay. We're already 5 feet beyond. I'm going to go from 5 feet beyond to 10 feet beyond. So the integral is 0 to 10. No. 
Five to ten. No, zero to twenty, no? No. Five to ten. You said ten feet more. So no, I said no. I didn't say that. I said it's not five feet beyond. I want to know the work done and uh, stretching it an additional five feet to go from five feet beyond to ten feet beyond. Oh, so ten feet. Oh, yes. Five. Oh, that's okay. what I said. I think. Okay, okay. Is that what I said? Well, that's the the, ten, the original picture just gives us K. Yeah, but the K doesn't change. No, K doesn't change throughout the problem unless you break the spring. Yes. So yes. So for F, it's always like the X, like five. So it's five X anyway. To the X, right? Say it again. Like, uh, like for any spring problem, it would be like five for the F. Mm. Five. Why are you? No. Where, where the big F is. See the big F? Yeah. yeah. Fifty. You're going to be given initial conditions. You got a spring. Yeah, I'm just asking. Is it always going to be that easy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. You're going to be given some initial condition that will enable you to solve for K. Once you know what k is, you're going to integrate kx. The only tricky part is your limits of integration. Like what you have to realize, what's that? No, sorry. All right. Well, what you have to realize is natural length gives you zero. Okay, that's zero. Now you can compress the spring. If I were to ask you how much work is done in compressing this spring three feet, you would go from zero to negative three. But it still would be the same five x here. Yeah. That's, this 5x will not change throughout the problem. What does change are these limits of integration depending on where you're going. Now you're going from 5 to 10. So what do you get? 187, How much? I don't know what it is. So the work done is equal to the limit from 5 to 10, 5x dx. Right? That's what we're doing. So 5x squared over 2. From 5 to 10. So we get 5 halves here. We get 100 minus 25. We get 75 times 5. Uh, 375 over 2. What'd you get? 187 and a half? Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Perfect. That's how many uh, foot pounds of work is done in stretching it from 5 feet out to the uh, that additional. Now, hold on a second. We set a 50 pound, uh, whatever. OK, that's it. That, that's how you do the spring problems. Solve for k, use the value of k. The only thing you got to be careful about is the limits of integration. When you compress a spring, it's the same thing as stretching it. OK, if you <laughs> to compress it from its natural length, say, 5 feet, compress it 5 feet, it'd be from 0 to negative 5. Okay, but that would be the same thing as going from zero to five, so it really wouldn't make any difference. Okay, all right, that's the uh, spring problems. That's it. Okay, that's what we got. That is it. See ya. You too. I was going to ask you a question, but like I'm too tired. Okay. I don't know, like one of the homeworks. I got the answer, just I don't. You can ask me anyone. Oh. Go ahead, you got it right now? Uh, let's oh, let's unrecord it.